Hello, in this fourth in a series of videos about diagrams in the UML and systems modeling languages, I'm going to cover composite structure diagrams. A key structure diagram in the 2005 revision of the unified modeling language called UML2. Composite structure diagrams express the composite structure of classifiers, or more specifically, structured classifiers. Structured classifiers are typically classes. In Rhapsody, they could also be actors or use cases, and they are called structured because they can contain and connect usages of other classifiers to form a static assembly of parts. Key to this are the concepts of ports, parts, and connectors that were also added in UML2 and that originated from other notations, predominantly a notation called room or real-time object-oriented modeling that underlay a tool called ROSE-RT or object time as it was called before. These concepts focus on encapsulation and component-based design. They also enable hierarchical decomposition to any level, and hence have formed an important basis for successful language extensions to the UML, such as the systems modeling language. I created this new traffic light training model last week with RAPSD 8.4. As we look at it, the first thing to note is that composite structure diagrams are actually called structure diagrams in RAPSD, and the initial composite word is left out. Rhapsody released its support for structured classes before the finalization of UML2. Secondly, composite structure diagrams can be created underneath packages, as I've done here, or underneath a classifier. Note when I do this, that with default properties set, Rhapsody will put the classifier onto the diagram canvas when we create a structured diagram underneath it. In fact, creating them under the class is the approach I recommend. Making sure you create the diagram underneath the classifier rather than putting it in a package becomes more important when diagram frames come into play, but I'll cover that later. First, let's have a look at the composite structure diagram in this model. Here we can see a structured class called light assembly. It has two parts in it linked via contracted ports. The RYG assembly class here has a port that is contracted to provide an interface that the controller requires. I can tell this from the lollipop and cup symbology emanating off the ports. The connector here is a link or connector between parts, not between classes, and is owned by the class that contains these two parts. So often I see people new to UML try to link ports together when the elements they are trying to link are classes. This is not UML. In UML there's a difference between classifiers which define the properties, behaviors, and ports of an element, and parts, which are usages of the classifier. We can think of a class as being the defining rubber stamp, and parts as being usages of that stamp in a particular context. If I return to the structure diagram, you can see these are parts because of the name. The colon here shows us the difference. The text before the colon is the part name, and the text after is the classifier. Note that the light assembly class is used in a higher level assembly of parts, in which a structure class called traffic light domain connects together a part typed by a light assembly class and a part typed by an actor called user. This supports hierarchical decomposition to any level. The light assembly is decomposed into parts which may be further decomposed. The symbol inside the structured compartment here tells us that the port is behavioral and hence the classifier will realize the messages in the provided interfaces. The Toucan controller is not therefore further decomposed. It has a state machine that mimics a particular sequence of traffic lights in a type of UK pedestrian crossing called a Toucan. Returning to the light assembly, the RYG assembly class here is further decomposed. Its port is a non-behaviour port. It relays messages to an internal part that provides a concrete realisation of the interface which controls the lights. The connectors to the red, yellow and green light parts don't use ports. Rather, they are instantiations of associations that exist in the class model. Let's return through the diagrams back up the hierarchy. We can see that structured classes provide a very intuitive notation for hierarchical decomposition of systems. 
The static connections in the model can also be used by the Rhapsody code generator to generate and build an assembly of objects. In this configuration, for example, I've told Rhapsody to build a main with a single light domain class instance running and all its derived parts. I can build and run the resulting application. And we can then view the resulting sequences of interactions that occur between the connected parts. It's also possible to interact with the running application by injecting events. I can view information about the runtime state of the objects using simple panel elements like these. Let's go back to the light assembly class. To reinforce the value, I want to show you how easy it is to plug and play parts. I'm going to delete the Toucan controller part in this light assembly and replace it with a different controller that mimics a French rather than UK pedestrian light sequence. This will illustrate how the encapsulation provided by ports, parts and connectors enables you to plug and play different implementations of a class provided that the interfaces are compliant. Having connected the new part, I can rebuild. Here we can see an assembly that uses the same red, yellow, green light component, but with a different controller where the light sequence goes straight from red to green without the red and yellow light in the sequence. I'll just go to an animated sequence diagram and drag on the faux tricolore controller and then hit go. Here we can see the creation of the objects, including the folk trickle or part communicating with the light assembly part. Note how the loose coupling provided by the ports and interfaces makes it very easy to reuse components in different structures, irrespective of how complex their implementations are, and also acts as a facade pattern. Let's just generate the press button event to view the light sequence. In the resulting sequence, we can see the traffic light transition straight from red to green rather than having a red and yellow steady light before the red light in the sequence. The three light assembly and their associated controller, however, are the same and hence form a reusable component that can be plugged into different builds. Just to finish off then, I want to show you two further aspects. The first is that you don't necessarily need to use a structure diagram to view or create internal parts for a structured class. With Rhapsody, you can switch the class to a structured view. You can then drag or create parts inside the structured view in the same way you can with a composite structure diagram. The part shown on this object model diagram is the same as the part shown on the light assemblies composite structure diagram. It's important to note that we can have multiple structure diagrams of the same element perhaps showing different viewpoints or collaborations of interest. Finally, I want to show you another advanced feature that relates to frames. I'm now going to change a general graphics property on the model called Structure Diagram Context. If you don't know about properties and you're using Rhapsody, then I suggest you take my training. I'm going to set the Structure Diagram Context to Class Owner. Now, if I redraw the structure diagram underneath the light assembly class after setting the property, then you'll notice that no class is populated. This is because the frame is now taking the place of the class. If I right click the frame, I can do things like choosing to show ports. Now, if I drag on the parts, then they're shown as being in the context of the class. This only works if the structure diagram is underneath the class. And it's also one of the default settings made by the SysML profile up front. This is because SysML mandates the use of diagram frames to represent the context of the diagram. Anyway, hopefully this helps. My name is Fraser Chadburn. I specialize in tool-based training and consulting in IBM products, and in particular setting up wraps to using domain-specific profiles. My other area of expertise is easing modeling by using Java automation and profiles to speed up and simplify modeling tasks so that users can focus on creative and fun systems and software engineering. So stay tuned. If you do have any questions though, feel free to contact me. Here's my email address.